Our next guest has been a vocal opponent to the theory of man-made climate change. Joining us now is Mark Morano. He is the publisher of Climate Depot. Dot com. Thanks for joining us, Mark. Thank you. Uh, you've heard the government's national assessment on climate change, but you do not believe that climate change is being caused by humans. Explain that to us. Well, it's not so much it's not being caused, it's what impact are humans having, and is it detectable? And uh, there's a new science report out, actually, uh, a thousand, over a thousand peer-reviewed uh, references, dozens of scientists, called Climate Change Reconsidered. And basically, the gist of it is you can't detect natural variability. You can't distinguish between natural variability and the human impact. And that's the significant thing, as scientists from around the world are now coming out. One is Leonard Bengstead, former UN uh, IPCC scientist who just came out and joined a skeptic group in the UK. And he says we wouldn't even have noticed the global warming temperature-wise the last century were it not for modern instrumentation. OK, well, you're saying it's instrumentation that's no, better than that. No, I'm saying it's not even noticeable. It's, uh, it's, right, we can't okay, distinguish well, it. Nothing unusual is happening okay, in our climate. And I'll be happy to Let's look at some of it. the facts here. Sure. We've heard that average temperatures in the U.S. have risen 1.5 degrees since uh, 1895, but 80 percent of that increase actually took place uh, since 1980. We've also, we also know now, through uh, measurement, that ocean levels are rising. Right. Ocean levels have been rising, first of all, since the last 10,000 years, and they've been, there's been no acceleration. In fact, a new paper in the journal Nature says since, I think, 2003, there's been a deceleration in sea level rise. Nothing alarming is happening with sea level rise. Well, we have National Geographic, which is reporting that ocean levels have risen by four to eight inches over, since the, when? Past, over the past century. Four to eight inches? It's about the thickness of a nickel per year. Uh, there's no acceleration is the key. Sea levels are always going to rise when you're coming out of, uh, first of all, a little ice age and then a, a full ice age over 10,000 years. So the idea that anything we're talking about in this, the report, the, the Fred, President Obama's report, claims that we're feeling global warming here and now, and the scientists you had on referenced that. Uh, the bottom line is on every metric, and you can talk tornadoes, hurricanes, floods, drought, not only are we, quote, not feeling it now, we're either on no trend or declining trends on 50 to 100 year time scales. But we are feeling it. I mean, we've seen hurricanes, for instance, Hurricane Sander. We've seen more uh, tornadoes in the Midwest in America. We've seen o uh, ocean levels rise in, in Bangladesh, for instance. Uh, first of all, you used, used the word facts earlier. I hope you're not using that now. Every bad weather event is now proof of global warming. There's no way to falsify the theory well, if that's the case. Sandy yet. was not unusual. Okay, we've seen And it was actually trend. going through the longest period without a Category 3 or larger hurricane hitting the United States. It's been since 2005. That's the longest period in at least a century. Big tornadoes, F3 and larger, uh, since the 1950s and 70s have been on a decline. There might be more tornadoes counted because we have better monitoring, but actual damaging tornadoes, huge decline. The most damaging decade for hurricanes were the 1940s. Floods and droughts. Droughts are on a decline in western U.S., I believe over 160 okay, years or okay. 100 years. So are you saying, we've just had this report from the United States, we've had yeah. another report from the United Nations as well, all pointing to changes, serious changes, yeah, that are impacting They're people. They're pointing to weather wait, wait, patterns. Wait, yeah, sure. that impact people throughout the world. Are you saying nothing should be done? We don't need to do anything. I'm saying, yeah, absolutely. When, yes, when you look at their solutions, their, their so-called solutions would have no detectable climate impact. Our president, Obama, is on record as calling our failed cap-and-trade bill would make our planet four or five degrees cooler for our grandchildren. His e then EPA director went to the United States Senate and testified that not only would the cap-and-trade bill not impact global temperature, it wouldn't even impact global CO2 levels. What they're proposing is pure symbolism. It's, in fact, medieval witchcraft in a way, because they're saying we can alter the weather through acts of Congress, the EPA, United Nations Yeah, treaties. but if you were saying nothing should be done, are we just going to continue and we pour out all these effluents into the air, pollute the air, continue well, to do that? Well, CO2 is not an effluent. No, we're doing everything. Every coal plant built today is radically cleaner than ones built 30, 40 years ago. Natural gas, natural gas fracking is replacing coal in many instances and now coming up about maybe already surpassed it in the baseload electricity. That's causing dramatic reductions. We're now in the United States is seeing our emission levels drop due to technology, not big government solutions brought upon by fear by people like John Holdren. Look, in 1846 in Australia, Aborigines blamed uh, the, the bad climate on the introduction of the white man in Australia. In uh, 19, World War II, they blamed World War II for causing unusual weather, pa weather patterns. In 1933, Syria banned the yo-yo because they thought it caused drought in Syria. In the 1970s, the exact same things we're talking about today were blamed on yeah, man-made global I mean, cooling. If, if you say nothing should be done, doesn't this play into the hands of big energy, oil companies? For what hands? First of all, when faced with a non-problem, as Lord Moncton once said, the best thing to do is, is have the courage to do nothing. When you're dealing 
on every metric, they are failing. When current reality fails to alarm, they make a bunch of scary and scarier well, predictions. You know, I, I, that's I, what, I, that's I, what this report I, I, is. It's a political okay. report. I, uh, you Please may call be it a, careful with okay. the word fact. You may, a, you may call it a disturbing political Disturbing word report. you used earlier you, when you said fact. Okay, it is fact because 300 <laughs> scientists were involved in the so, compilation of the White House report. There were hundreds more scientists right. involved in the UN report. What are your qualifications as a climate my, scientist? My qualification, I have a background in political science, which is the perfect yeah. qualification to examine global warming, yeah, but, but I don't is, rely on is, myself. I, have, I actually have worked with teams of scientists. I authored a report of over 1,000 international scientists that have dis dissented from so-called man-made global I mean, warming But this fears. is climate science. And, you know, I have to that, also that report you're uh, referencing yeah. had included Nature Conservancy and right. the Union of Concerned Scientists. It included environmental activists. It was written to cause a political agenda. And American people aren't that stupid. Okay, you know, you, you keep, keep, saying, right you keep saying political agenda. I mean, take your organization, ClimateDepot.com. Yes. Who, who finances you? Uh, we got over 80% is from individual donors. I wish there were big energy like you seem to think is fact. Yeah. There is no big energy out there proponing it. In fact, one donation by the natural gas, carbon-based energy, to the Sierra you Club get, you of $26 okay. million dollars exceeded right. you my get, budget by about you, five times. All right. One donation. So if you do want to you, look at you uh, get any the big money? energy, look right. at environmental groups getting money Do you money get from any them. money from the oil companies? We might get some, but I, as, I, I used to work for Senator Inhofe. How much money does big energy give? His answer was not enough when you look at how well financed the other side is and how much they've given. I wish big energy were like you say, the Koch brothers, which many people say, oh, the evil Koch brothers, 59th giving in American politics. That's where they come in. You have the Democrats with people like Tom Steyer, billionaire Democrats giving money. Are you looking into that? Are you worried about their bias on this no, at I'm all? I'm talking to you right now. I'm asking you where you come from, because you're saying this is political. This is not scientific. That's exactly right. If you look at the scientists from around the world, most of them are emeritus professors who have recently come out. And some of them aren't. Judith Curry was one who just, Georgia Institute of Technology. She's now testifying on the Republicans on behalf of global warming uh, in, the, in house hearings. She used to be a, a firm believer, if you will. She said, I'm now a, quote, heretic on global warming. James Lovelock, one of the biggest green girls, reversed himself. He said it's become a religion, that global warming is about politics. The big money is in the government solutions, government grants, government funding of alternative energy and mandates and shutting down a war on coal, shutting down, trying to go now after fracking. You talk about, your last guest talked about minorities and African American, the disproportionate impacts. Mm -hmm. The biggest impact minorities, seniors, people on fixed income face are so-called solutions which drive up the cost of our energy and, and make them freeze in the winter, sweat in the summer. In the UK, people have died this past winter because of commitment to green energy based on the political global warming reports that they've had similar ones like that. So this report, President Obama's done us a favor in a way because no one's going to take this seriously. In a way, Al, well, Gore, Al Gore has this, made global warming partisan right, President right. Obama's well, further that I'm not that sure cost. whether no one's going to take this seriously. Well, the obviously, usual suspects well, will. Sure. Obviously, there are various viewpoints in this. Mark Morano, thank you very much for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you very much. Enjoy it. Smog is a problem all across China, and the World Health Organization says it carries tremendous health issues. Next, two authors weigh in on the issue and what needs to be done to improve the air quality in China. You're watching The Heat. Stay with us.